And then they'll find out, you know what they'll do? A lot of times, if they find you're a risk factor or they find that your blood is too low, they'll say, okay, this type of surgery we're going to have, you know what? We need to have some blood on standby. Amen. They'll have blood on standby. They'll be ready for you, okay? So they'll do these bleeding tests. They'll find out if you are bleeding on the inside. And then if they find out that you are bleeding on the inside, they'll either cancel the surgery, they'll try to rectify the bleeding, they may give you some medicine, what's called anticoagulants, to try to counteract the bleeding that you are doing on the inside. Amen. Praise the Lord. A lot of times, one of the things that can happen from this is that people, a lot of people are finding are on what's called blood thinners. Amen. Whether it's a raw toe, heparin, coumadin, you know, they're on blood thinners. And sometimes a lot of people, they may not keep up with their lab studies. You know, they may just be taking it and taking it and taking it. They may not be going to the lab to find out if they're bleeding, if their blood is getting too thin. Amen, praise the Lord. So they just get on these blood thinners, you know. So in other words, they are, oh my shot. Stay with me, stay with me. So in other words, they are bleeding on the inside and they may not even know it. They're still taking in. They're still taking these blood thinners. It's still affecting them. It's still wounding them. But they may not know it right away because they have not done the test that's needed to be done to find out just how deep the, the bleeding is. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to correlate that with toxic emotions. I want to correlate that with toxic emotions. A lot of us, you know, it may not be physical bleeding, okay? But you know what? We may be hurt. That's a toxic emotion. That's a damaged emotion. That's a wound that's on the inside that people cannot see on the outside. You know why they can't see it on the outside? Because we smiling and we're cheerful and we know, hey girl, how you doing? Oh, I'm just so blessed and I'm just highly favored. Amen, praise the Lord. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with speaking in the faith. But is it the truth? And then find out why it's not the truth. Another toxic emotion. We can walk around angry. Another thing that's got us bleeding on the inside, anger. You're angry about this. You're angry about that. Somebody may come in through the door. Hey, honey, how you doing today? What you smiling about? What got you so happy? Kids coming in. Mama, can we go out there? Get away from me. I ain't got time for you. Just angry. Another toxic emotion. What's got you angry? Why are you angry? How did the anger get in? Amen. Those, these are issues they've got to be dealt with. There are toxic emotions because it's bringing, it can bring a slow bleed on the inside, even though those around you, you know, they just very well may not be able to see it. Pain is another toxic emotion. You know, pain, always hurting, you know, just can't seem to have a day's peace. Amen. Just in pain all the time. Toxic emotions. There are others, but I just want to deal with just a few because I just want you to get the point that toxic emotions can be deadly. You know, the toxic emotions, people, I'm not sure if people are aware of this. Toxic emotions can bring on all kinds of illnesses, cancers, arthritis. It can bring a, a, a lupus. It can just bring a, all kinds of of illnesses because you know why it's a slow bleed it's a slow bleed on the inside that's not being dealt with amen you know why because we keep taking our blood thinners we keep taking that hurt we keep ingesting that anger we keep you know uh, uh, uh dealing with the pain amen you know so we've got to deal with these issues one thing about bruise because when it gets when it accumulates too much one of the warning signs is that you'll start to get a bruise even though it's all on the inside okay 
But what's going to happen? You're going to start getting purple. You're going to start getting blue. You're going to start getting black. It's going to eventually, it's going to manifest on the outside. Have you ever just accidentally hit your arm up against the car door or something, and you look down, and you got a bruise there? It's not from the outside. It's actually hurt from the inside. It is manifesting on the outside. And that is what's happening with a lot of toxic emotions. It may just be built up on the inside. Ask me how I know. It may be built up on the inside, but it will eventually start manifesting on the outside. The one thing, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the one thing that I do encourage, you know, uh, uh, people, they do, uh, like I said, they do do these lab tests, you know. You know why? Because they're indicators. That'll let uh, the doctors know if a danger is in progression or not. If there is something uh, unexpected that they don't want to happen. Amen. It's an indicator. It's going to let you know. So you know what? If you're already getting angry at the simplest thing, if you're already in pain and you're wounded and you're crying at the littlest thing, if you're, if you're, if you're hurting at the littlest thing, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're angry, you know, y'all, those may be indicators. They may, if you're jealous, at the littlest thing, if you envy because your neighbor got a new car and you just haven't gotten raised, haven't been able to get, you know, toxic emotions. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me go on because I do want to get some things dealt with here. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you go, let me read it. Luke chapter 13. Go with me quickly. I'm trying to do this quickly because I do want to get some things covered. Go with me to Luke chapter 13, verse 10 to 13. Luke chapter 13, verse 10 to 13, it says this. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of an infirmity uh, for 18 years. And she was bowed down together and could in no wise lift up herself. Verse 12. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed. From your infirmity. Now, here's the thing. Here's a lady for a woman, excuse me, a woman for 18 years that had been bent over. She was just bent over. She was pretty much crippled. I don't know why. But obviously, something in her spine, something in her back, it must have been out of alignment. It must not have been straight. It must not have been in alignment. Something was diverted. Something got out of hand. Something deviated. She was in, the Bible says, that this woman for 18 years, she was bent over, which lets me know that there's a strong possibility that she may not have been able to see much from her hips down. That she was able, she was quite familiar with maybe her feet. She might be quite familiar to those that may walk up on her with their legs and their feet. That she was not able to look straight, to sit, to stand straight, to see straight, to uh, keep her head up. But she was always bent over. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that she was this way for 18 years. Thank God the woman was able to walk. The Bible just says that she had this infirmity. She was bent over for 18 years. Amen. You know what that lets me know too? That we could get, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We could get uh, acceptance. We could have acceptance with our infirmity. You know, well, this ain't going to never change. You know, I've been, I'm doing, I've been through all of that. This ain't going to get no better. I'm a, I just may as well just get used to this. You know what? This poverty. I've been in poverty all my life. Mm. I can't get no help. I can't get no relief. Uncle Sam ain't thinking about nobody but himself. Just bent over. You know, I can't even get pampers for the baby. Just bent over. You know, Bojo, don't left me and let me go. Just bent over, you know. Just just feel like, you know, if, if you couldn't touch bottom, that there would be no top. I mean, just bent over. But the Bible lets us know that she did encounter this one man. His name was Jesus. And she said, you know what? She said, look here. 
Jesus looked at this woman. He touched her. And he said, woman, you know what he told her? You know what he told her? He didn't say be healed. You know what he told her? He didn't say rise up and walk in this instance. You know what he told her? He said, woman, he said, you loose from your infirmity. That thing that had you where you could not walk straight. That thing that had you where you could not be uplifted. That thing that had you where you could not do things every day that the average person does. That thing that had you that you felt like life was worthless. That you had to give up. You're loosed. The Bible says that Jesus told her that she was loose from her in. Infirmity, that thing that had her stuck. She was loosed from the infirmity. Amen. And you know what? God has given me authority. He has given you authority. And you know what? I use that authority from the kingdom of God. And I decree and declare that this day that you are loosed from your infirmity, whether it is poverty, whether it is illness, whether it is a, 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 a same old situation and circumstances from the children, from the spouse, from the job, from staff members, whatever and whoever, you're loose from the infirmity in the name of Jesus. I receive it. All you got to do is just receive it. Let me go on real quick. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, where do I want to go from here? Over in Isaiah. I'm finna really get serious now. Over in Isaiah, uh, chapter 53, verse 3 and 4, the Bible says, speaking about Jesus, the prophecy of Jesus, that he was despised and he was rejected of men. The Bible says that he was a man of sorrows. The Bible says, over in Isaiah 53, that he was acquainted with grief. He was, Jesus was a man of sorrows and he was acquainted with grief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we think we got troubles. The Bible says he was acquainted. He was, it was a familiarity. It was almost a lifestyle. He was acquainted with grief. He was a man of sorrows. Do you know what that lets me know? There's good news. Do you know what that lets me know? Read it right here in verse 4. Come down. Come with me. Just one verse down. The Bible says that he, because, because he was a, 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 a man of sorrows and equated with grief, the Bible says, go me to verse 4 in Isaiah 53, that he bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows. Mm -hmm. So many people today, you know, ask me how I know, have been depressed. Y'all, I would get to the point, I didn't want to leave. I wouldn't want to talk to nobody. I wouldn't want to deal with nobody. I love being shut up in my home. I didn't want to be involved with nobody. My phone would ring. I'm like, oh Lord, who is this calling me now? Did it for many years. Many years. Gotten so bitter. I let the bitterness come in and bring anxiety and depression. It started from bitterness from many years ago. Why? I allowed the hurt. I allowed the toxic emotions. I didn't, look, it didn't come in. I allowed it to come in. I catered it. I catered it. So many people are so depressed. So many people are dealing with such anxiety, whether you are Christian or whether not. So many people. It's, 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 it's you, y'all, it's amazing. And the people that I see, even where I work, it's amazing. I mean, it's just amazing. It is. But you know what? I thank God. I thank God. The Bible, let me tell you something. Do you know where Jesus was crucified? He was crucified at Golgotha. Do you know that is the place of the skull? That lets me know right there also that victory has already been given to us in our minds. Can I tell you something? Watch this. First Peter, first Peter, hallelujah. Uh, chapter 5, verse 7. It says, casting all of 
of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Here's the thing. I, I'm being transparent because, we, you know, I really, I really just want to see a lot of people. And, you know, I just want to see advancement from this day forward, okay? The Bible says right here in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, casting all of your anxieties on him for he cares for you. But you know what we do? I wish I had my phone with me. You know what we do? Girl, guess what brother Charles did yesterday? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he think he's slick, girl. Mm-hmm. Why he kill with me anyway if he ain't planning on keeping me? Why he felt he can just use me till he just used me? You know what we do? We don't cast all our anxieties. Oh, I just got a pink slip. Oh, my God. What I'm going to do? I got three days. Oh, my God. Mama, help. Mama, mama. I got three days. What I'm going to do? You know what the Bible said? He said, cast all your anxieties on him. He cares for you. He'll, he could go to a dream. He could speak to somebody in a dream. He could speak to this person. Are you at Walmart and say this person just come up and just say, hey, if the Lord spoke to me, I need to bless you with this. Hey, you know what? I'm just feeling good today. Let me just let you have this. The Bible says, casting all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Amen. We're not talking about sister girl, although it's good because, you know, the Bible do say uh, uh, for us to uh, uh, pray one for another. We do need to do that. Okay. So, but I'm talking about here, when it's coming to your anxieties, that's what I'm speaking about. The Bible says that you cast them onto Jesus. I believe it's Psalms uh, 55 and 22 that says, cast your burdens on the Lord for he cares for you. He will not suffer the righteous to be moved. Proverbs 17 and verse 22 says this. A joyful heart, oh my God, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries the bones. You know what it's saying? You know what it's saying? A crushed spirit dries the bone. Arthritis, osteoarthritis, brittle bones. Mm -hmm. A crushed spirit. What is he speaking about here? Depression. And I'm telling you, y'all, oh my God, it is rampant. It is rampant. We don't see it because we're too busy. We, I'm blessed. We're blessed. Just blessed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's depression. Jesus, who can get above him? Ooh, the Bible says he was acquainted with grief and a man of sorrows. Amen. He carried it. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. He carried it for us. We no longer have to. The Bible says, whom the Son says free is free indeed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I actually, I was trying to pick uh, I had a couple of subjects that I really wanted to speak on, you know, but I just kept feeling, I kept getting the pull, I kept getting the tug for the disease with the issue. And I was like, but I really like this, but I kept getting the tug with the disease with the issue. Because so many of us, whether you are in the body of Christ, whether you are in the church, whether you are a leader, whether you are a layman, whether you are a, 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 a person that may be a delegated in a, a, in a part uh, or orchestrated or implemented in a part of the church, so many people, they are diseased with issues. Amen. They go through some anxieties. They go through some depression. They go through some toxic emotions. Amen. But my Bible tells me that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I wrote down little uh, synonymous words with joy. Uh, jubilation, exuberance, uh, exhilarating, um, glee. Amen. 
The joy of the Lord is our strength. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be free today. Amen. We're not walking away with toxic emotions because my Bible tells me that whom the Son says free is free indeed. The Bible says that Jesus, Jesus, he carried our sorrows. He carried them for us. We no longer have to do it. But you have to allow him to carry it. Can I say this one thing to you real fast? Let me just, this is the illustration that's coming to me right now. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. Uh, you know, it's like going to the bank, you know, and you know, you get your check stubs and your little paper and you get it all filled out and you give it to the teller. You say, hey, you know, I want to make this deposit. You know, in other words, the bank is keeping it for you. The bank has it now. They stored it. They've got it for you. Jesus, he has it for you. He stored it. He's got it. Leave it with him. But you know what we do? Right away. We go back, get the withdrawal. I'm sorry. I need this out right now. Yep, yep, give me back my hurt. Yep, give me back my anger. Give me back my jealousy. Give me back my envy. Give me back my pain. We go right back and we make a withdrawal instead of leaving it there. And then you know what we say? God, why? Then we come through, we say, Father, why? Why did God let this happen? The indicators was there. The warnings was there. Amen. Amen. You're free. I'm free. We are free. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Listen to me, woman of God. Listen to me, single mother. Listen to me, man of God. Listen to me, single father. Listen to me, you that just got out of jail. Uh-huh. Listen to me, you that, that, that's getting ready to go get employed. Listen to me, you that feel like your life is just too heavy and too hard. You can be free. You can be free. Give it to the Lord. Cast all your cares on him. Because he cares for you. My God from on high. I'm trying not to get too, you know, and I don't want to get too, you know, I just want this to be heartfelt because it's serious. And I'm not trying to make light of it in any kind of way. It's a serious subject, very serious. It's got to be dealt with. Amen. Let me marinate. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you receive this prayer by the blood of Jesus. And I pray for each and every one that is listening. Father, I pray for each and every one that is hurting. Father, I pray for each and every one that is angry. Father, I pray for each and every one that is ready to give up. Father, I pray for each and every one that is jealous. Father, I pray for each and every one that is envious. Father, I pray for each and every one that is walking around in poverty. Father, I pray right now for those that are struggling. For those that are ready to give up. For those that are on the verge of throwing their hands up. Father, I pray for those that are on the um, verge of backsliding. Father, I pray for those that want to go get drugs. Father, I pray for those that want to go out and do something illegal. I pray for them right now, God. In the matchless name of Jesus. Father, I ask for you to come in and do a divine. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Father, I ask for you to come in and do a divine intervention for each and every one that is listening under the sound of this loud voice. And I want to thank you by faith. I take kingship authority as a son of God and I claim it, I call it, I decree that we are free. That the chains are broken. In the name of Jesus. And I want you to lift your hands up. And I want you to tell the Lord thank you. Because he's doing it. He's doing it. I believe it. Because I know that he definitely. This was something that he put. That I felt like I need to be ministering to you today. 
I got one minute left. But you know what? I'm finna stop right there. Because if I go any further, it's gonna all be flesh. It's just gonna be flesh. Amen. I have spoken what I felt was necessary and what I felt was essential. I love each and every one of you. The, the website is www.realissuesinlife.com. I love you so much. I thank God for you. I thank God for you. Uh, um, I love you. And you know what? I'm going to end it right there. God bless you. Bye now. Bye.